Judging the fit of a garment is just as important as evaluating the quality of its construction. Some alterations can be satisfactorily made with a reasonable amount of time and skill. Some cannot. This tape shows some common fitting problems that can be corrected and demonstrates some satisfactory ways of making these alterations. Wrinkles across a seat of these slacks indicates that the back crotch length is too long. A simple way to correct this problem on slacks with a regular set-on waistband, such as this pair has, is to take out the extra length just below the waistband. To determine the amount of alteration needed, pin the excess fabric into a tuck at center back. Measure and mark the depth of this tuck. Transfer this measurement to just below the waistline seam. Mark the entire alteration line as a gentle curve, coming back to the original waistline at the side seams. Rip the waistband and reattach it at this newly established waistline. If this change makes the crotch too tight, reshaping will be necessary. Do this by turning one leg of the slack inside out and placing the other inside it so that right sides are together. Stitch the back crotch into a deeper curve. Because of the more involved waistband construction in men's trousers, a different method than the one just shown for altering the crotch length is frequently used. Again, determine the amount of alteration needed by pinning out the excess as a horizontal tuck at center back. The appearance of these slacks indicates the need for a second alteration, one to remove the excess ease from the hip area. Determine the amount of alteration needed by pin fitting. The correction will be made by taking a deeper center back seam. Both alterations can be effectively done at the same time. Note the size of the horizontal tuck at center back. This excess amount will be removed from the back of the trouser leg at the inseam. Rip the crotch seam for about two inches on either side of the inseam. Rip the inseam of the trouser legs from crotch to the knee area. Take the predetermined amount off the back of each trouser leg. Begin at the crotch area and taper to nothing at the knee. Take in and reshape the back crotch seam as needed. Personal preference and fashion influence trouser legs. Regardless of fashion, the length should be determined with the slack or trouser on the individual. Mark the desired length at the front of the trouser leg where the amount of break can be observed.
Trousers are usually finished one half inch longer in back than in the front. We'll show you how this adjustment can be accurately made as the trousers are being marked on a flat surface. This tape shows an easy way to cuff trousers and will also illustrate how the technique can be varied for a hem. On a piece of paper, draw a vertical line that is somewhat longer than the trouser inseam. At the lower end of this vertical line, draw four horizontal lines that intersect the vertical line at right angles. The space between the lines should be the desired width of the finished hem or cuff. The top line represents the finished length, the next two are the cuff fold lines, and the bottom line is the cutting line. If the trousers are to be hemmed, only two lines are needed. The finished length and the cutting line. The yellow line in both sketches represents the half inch drop for the back length. Place the inseam of one trouser leg along the vertical line. Bring the marking that was put on the front of the trouser to indicate the finished length to the first horizontal line. With chalk, mark the location of the second line on the front of the trouser leg. Mark a point one half inch below the second line as indicated. With a ruler and chalk, mark a line on the trouser connecting these two points. Fold back the trouser leg against the ruler. Hold it firmly and transfer the same marking to the inside of the leg. Fold and mark the outside of the second leg in the same way. Mark the position of the third line on the front of the trouser leg. Transfer the fourth line to the trouser in the same way that you did the second one. Cut away the excess fabric. Pinking shears may be used if the fabric has little or no tendency to ravel. If the edge needs to be finished, use straight cutting shears and then finish the edge appropriately. Fold, press, and sew hem or cuff in place. Hold a cuff in position with French tacks in the seam lines. The fold across the back of this jacket is due to this individual's square shoulders. To correct, pin out the fold as a two-ended dart. The deepest part of the dart will be at center back. The dart should terminate near the shoulder line. Measure and mark the size of the dart to determine the amount of alteration needed. Notice that this will increase the length of the back neckline. To restore the neckline seam line to its original size and to square the jacket shoulder line, excess fabric needs to be removed from the shoulder seams. Detach the collar across the back and for an inch or more, pass the shoulder seam into the front neckline. 
open the shoulder seams to within about one inch of the arm size. Take in the shoulder seams the amount needed to restore the neckline to its original size. After the shoulder line has been altered, try the jacket on to make sure the shoulder area fits correctly. This pin line marks the location of the new neckline seam. Trim shoulder seams to an even width and press open. Put the jacket on again and pin the collar in place. Fold the collar into position to be sure that it lays smoothly and covers the neckline seam. Adjust if necessary. Trim neckline seam allowance to a uniform width, then reattach the collar. As indicated, another problem with the fit of this jacket is that the back darts are too deep, making the waist area too tight, as well as creating too much shaping in the shoulder area above the darts. This is a simple alteration to make. Just reduce the size of the darts. One word of caution, however. This alteration cannot be made if small holes were punched in the fabric during construction, as they will show when the darts are let out. Also, it's impossible to successfully remove the original press marks from some fabrics. The neckline of this dress stands away from the body, indicating that the back needs some reshaping to more nearly conform to the contour of the individual. This shaping can be achieved by adding darts to the back neckline or increasing the size of any existing darts. Another possibility would be to take some of the excess out of the center back seam, but this frequently involves the removal of the zipper and may not be the desired approach. Pin out the excess fabric as darts. Locate them equidistant from the center back seam and about midway between the center back and shoulder. Position them so that they fan at the points. The length will vary slightly with individuals, but as a general rule, darts in the back neckline are three to three and a half inches long. Taper them gradually so when stitched and pressed, they will lie smooth and flat, no bubbles at the point. To complete the alteration, the back neck facing will need to be detached so the darts can be made in the garment only. After the darts have been sewn and pressed, put the dress back on to reshape the facing. Smooth the facing into the garment neckline. The neck edge of the garment and facing will no longer fit together. With pin or chalk, mark the neck edge and shoulder line of the facing to correspond to the altered neckline of the garment.
The completed alteration has improved the fit of the garment noticeably. When the arm's eye falls or droops, as this one does, it's obvious that the garment is too wide in the shoulders. Locate the new arm's eye position with tape or string. This particular garment is going to require an unusual amount of alteration, more than should be attempted in most fabrics. This jacket can be altered because it is made of a stretchy knit and also because there are pleats in the sleeve cap that can be let out enough to provide the extra length needed in the sleeve cap to fit the increased size of the armhole that occurs in this alteration. To make the alteration, take out the stitching over the top of the sleeve to within about one inch of the underarm seam. Reset the sleeve by matching the original stitching line of the sleeve to the newly marked arm's eye seam line of the garment. Let out the fullness or ease over the sleeve cap as much as needed to get the sleeve to fit smoothly into the arm's eye. Trim out the excess fabric in the garment arm's eye. Restitch. The arm's eye seam now follows the normal contour of the individual's body. Lengthening sleeves is a commonly needed alteration. Check before you buy to make sure that there is sufficient fabric in the sleeve hem to allow for the needed amount of lengthening. Rarely is there enough fabric in the sleeve lining to let down. This problem can be solved, however, by splicing or extending the lining with matching or blending fabric. Correct sleeve length is somewhat a matter of individual choice. However, just below the wrist bone, is generally considered to be a good length. The hem in this sleeve is deep enough to provide the fabric to lengthen the sleeve the needed amount, but there is not enough remaining for a new hem, so a facing will have to be added. The facing for this sleeve is of self-fabric coming from an unwanted half belt. If no self-fabric is available, row rain ribbon or a blending fabric could be used. The sleeve lining was lengthened by inserting a blending piece of fabric between the elbow and wrist area where it will not show. This jacket fits nicely in the shoulder area, but it is too big in the back waist. This will be a relatively simple alteration to make because in this jacket, the excess can be removed at the center back seams and at the side dart seams. The original proportions will be preserved if an equal amount is removed from each of these seams. If this design had a back vent, it probably would be easiest to make all the alteration in the dart seams so that it would not be necessary to reconstruct the vent when the altering was done. It is also important to analyze the fit in the hip area to decide if the alteration needs to go through the hem. In this case, some alteration in the hip circumference is needed so that the hem will need to be taken out. And at the center back, the alteration will be made all the way to the lower edge. The lining will need to be altered in the same manner and the same amount as the outer jacket.
Our model seems to be pleased with its finished result.